Hey everybody, welcome back to World History. So we're doing section four today. So we're really going to end the war proper. And the next class we'll talk about the legacy of World War II as well. So you will have an assignment today. Uh, it is a reflection assignment, but I will explain that later on in the notes today. So go ahead and get your notes out and let's get started. So it's important to note that the Nazis were really defeated by March of 1945 and allies on the east and west side met at the Elbe River near Berlin. The Axis armies were everywhere and surrendered. Mussolini was captured and executed by his own populace. Hitler then commuted, uh, committed suicide in the theater bunker as the Soviet Union advanced on Berlin. Now, Germany officially surrendered on May 7th, known as VE Day, was celebrated in, on May 8th, 1945, a major day. The war had been raging since 1939. This was the first day of peace in Europe in over six years. Here's some images from around uh, Europe on VE Day. Now, reasons for the Allies' success. The German location on several fronts slowed them down. Uh, Hitler had such a strong arm on control that he made some rather poor decisions and he underestimated the Soviet Union. There was also enormous productive capacity in the United States which was two times more than all the Axis powers combined. Add that to an oil scarcity in Germany, the Luftwaffe was pretty much grounded by D-Day, meaning no air support. And the war continued to rage. Now uh, we have a picture of the British royalty. This is King George, if I remember correctly. And you may know his daughter, this lovely lady right over here, Queen Elizabeth II. She's still on the throne. So let's jump over to the Pacific Theater, because even though we've wrapped up the uh, e European side of the war, we still have the uh, Pacific Theater to wrap up as well. Now, until 1942, Japan was essentially uninterrupted. We really didn't get involved till late 1942. Now, here we have the Bataan Death March, a 65-mile forced march of Filipino and U.S. prisoners of war under brutal conditions by the Japanese. Let's just say things were not pretty if you were sent on the Bataan Death March. It's in the name. More likely than not, you're not going to live. Now, after the battles of Coral Sea and Midway, we, I, we also have some further victories at the Battle of Guadalcanal, known as Operation Watchtower. And with that victory, we began a tactic known as island hopping to recapture some Japanese-held islands with bypassing others. Think of it as like uh, stepping stones, like if you're hopping from one stone to another as you're crossing a, a creek. Now, our forces in the Pacific were led by General Douglas MacArthur and led the movement of north towards Japan and fought to retake the Philippines. We also have Admiral Chester Nimitz who led the U.S. Navy specifically and led a naval blockade around Japan. There's the, three, the two of them with Roosevelt. Um, I believe that, if I remember correctly, that's, this is Nimitz, and then that is MacArthur. Now, we defeated Japan pretty quickly. Um, by mid-1945, most of the Japanese Navy and Air Force had been destroyed, and an army of two million prepared to start doing kamikaze runs, pilots who took on suicide missions. It was clear that Japan would fight to the death and not surrender, as long as one man was still standing. We saw this at the Battle of Iwo Jima, which raged for over a month from February to March of 1945. First real invasion of the Japanese homeland. It's also the bloodiest battle in Marine Corps history. We took some strategic Japanese airfields, and it was about a five-mile long island. It took over a month to successfully capture it. I believe out of Japanese forces there, I want to say less than 100 survived, and there was almost 10,000 stationed on that island, if I remember correctly. Now, Joe Rosenthal took the photo of the flag raising on Iwo Jima. He would win a Pulitzer Prize. This is on top of Mount Suribachi. This image is actually uh, immortalized in a statue at the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. Now, we also have a continued battle of Okinawa from April to July. Now, this is the largest amphibious landing with casualties for the Allies ranging about 50,000, the Japanese over 100,000 casualties during this war. I mean, this battle specifically, excuse me. April of 1945, we had some issues. Now, this is before the Germans surrendered. 
President Roosevelt died. Now, mind you, he was born in 1882 and had already been suffering from some health issues. So, I mean, it's no surprise. Plus, he had just been elected to his fourth term in office. So, we now see him replaced by his vice president, Harry Truman. And it was Truman who had to make the ultimate decision, invade or drop a bomb. Now, unbeknownst to everybody except FDR, a project had been funded known as the Manhattan Project, a code name for the project to build the first atomic bomb. Now, Harry Truman, the new president, him being of Missouri, had to make a decision and consulted with his advisors, save American lives and avoid invasion. And the Allies warned Japan ahead of time, surrender or face complete destruction and utter devastation. The Japanese did not surrender. Now, on August 6th, 1945, the first atomic bomb known as Little Boy was dropped on the city of Hiroshima. Now, it's important, uh, it was dropped by a plane by the name of Enola Gay, and boom. That would be what is left. Two days later, because the Japanese still didn't surrender, we dropped another one on the city of Nagasaki, known as a fat man. Now, this is in Hiroshima. This is the A-bomb dome, which is still standing today. Um, if I remember, I'll bring in my pictures I have of this place specifically from when I visited. But it is one of the only buildings that was destroyed during the drop of the atomic bomb that is still standing today. Two days after that, Emperor Hirohito intervened, and on the battleship Missouri, a peace treaty was signed, ending the war in the Pacific, known as VJ Day. All right, you're going to have a reflection over the atomic bomb as your assignment for tonight. I will see you all next time. Bye, everyone.